Daddy eats lots. Daddy eats lots. Daddy eats lots. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy Eats Last, where we discuss the challenge of being a man in modern society and whatever the hell that even means. I'm Kane and joining me tonight is Maddie. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you? Very well. How's your week? Week was really good this week. Um, a lot of rain up here, though, in Queensland, so there's a lot of indoor stuff happening this week. Um, and over the weekend, uh, a bit of interior decorating by putting a lot of pictures up on the walls and measuring and did a trip to Ikea this morning to uh, see what we could uh, add to the house. Well, I'm surprised you made it out of Ikea. Those, those places are just impossible to find your way out of unless you leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Eloise has found the arrows on the floor, so she guides the way and gets us out safely to the hot dogs, which is, which is good. Even though they're a dollar and they taste pretty average, but the kids like them. Dollar hot dogs at Ikea? I didn't know that. Yeah, and even with a nice, freshly crusty roll too. So they're not too bad, but um, they're no, um, yeah, they're not king hot dogs. I was going to say, eat your heart out, Bunnings. Dollar, dollar hot dog at Ikea. Get along there, punters. Actually, went to Bunnings this afternoon with Sammy. We've got a sausage as well. So we've had um, the sausage <laughs> fest today. Oh, man. Well, we had our first week of uh, uh, the little fella being in kinder for the whole week. So he had Friday off. But by Thursday, he was knackered. He was only doing half days. But by lunchtime and each day, like the afternoon, he was just completely washed out. Like I think it's just go, go, go for like the best part of three and a half hours. And it's been similar across some of the parents that I've been talking to um, the odd days that I picked him up that, yeah, their kids are just being yeah, completely wrecked in the afternoon as well. Yeah. When, when Eloise went her first time, the, the first month, I think she was pretty wrecked. So how, how did your guy enjoy it? Did he, did he come home with some cool story? No, it's funny. Like he, he, we go, oh, how was your day? What did you get up to? He goes, oh, I, I, I did so many things. I, I can't tell you. Like, okay. <laughs> Top secret stuff. You want me building something? Or yeah, <laughs> is that some government yeah. job? But no, he had been. He was really good. Like there was no no real sort of defiance about I don't want to go or I never want to go back. Like he was happy enough to go the four days. I think he was happy enough to be home on Friday as well. It'll be interesting to see how we go tomorrow when we we butter back up. But fingers crossed, it's not a problem. That's great news. Yeah, that's that's half the battle getting him to get out the door and, and want to go as well. Yeah, well, my better half thought we'd have problems getting him out the door by a set time because he kind of straggles around in the morning and mucks around and stuff like that. But we'll be fine. And the first day of first day of kinder, he's already, you know, we went to leave about 20 past eight. He was already at 20 to eight. And then, <laughs> and he was chomping at the bit to go. And then, and he said he was chomping at the bit because I am chomping at the bit to go to kinder. And then each subsequent day, he was uh, sort of ready by eight. So he's obviously keen enough that he's not delaying it by, uh, you know, uh, I I do not want to eat. I do not want to brush my teeth. So oh, I love you. I love you. Do you have, have a watch? He's looking at or is he just just on good with schedules? I don't know how. I've been getting out slightly earlier than because usually I'd try to get him up at quarter past seven. Um, because he luckily he still lays in bed. But um, yeah, I've been getting him up about ten minutes early, so a, a ten minute buffer in there. But yeah, for whatever reason, oh, yeah. he's been pretty diligent in the mornings of uh, getting ready. Those buffers are very handy getting kids ready. Yeah, they are indeed. Um, speaking of children, we you know we both have children. Ryan, Ryan's uh, off in Norway, I think, this weekend. So we'll we'll, we'll keep yeah. it real and talk about kids. Um, dispersing advice to problems our kids face, regardless of how trivial they are. Now, I mean, you get a couple of examples of of this, don't you? I do. Yeah, I thought this might be a, a cool topic to discuss. Um, with any, I guess with, with any dads listening who have kids of various ages like, like I do, and um, the, uh, the, the problems they come to their parents with um, to discuss um, at, at certain stages of their lives. So, so my eldest one, Mia, who is started grade three this year, um, for the last couple of years, she's been coming, well, not been, she hasn't actually volunteered the information, you know, easily, you sort of have to, you, coerce it out of her but you can sort of tell her she's had a bit of a rough day at school um despite it by the tone or, or the attitude she she throws back to sort of some you know easy questions on the, on the drive home and sometimes you got to dig a little bit deeper um and even though sometimes i think that the issues are so you know quite trivial to the issues i'm facing in my life um at that point in time 
it's there's sort of a delicacy in how you respond to what they're saying to you, like the patience you've got to have. Um, some examples might be from, from Mia's point of view was um, only last week, actually, a, a girl during the day had said that Mia could let her videotape her, her speech she was doing. Um, I mean, just right before the speech time, she quickly changed her mind and gave it to another girl, which, you know, uh, off the top of, of, of listening to that, it was quite, you know, I need to hear on their problem. But when I dug a little bit deeper, Mia felt that she was sort of getting somewhere in, in the friendship phase with this girl and then she sort of chopped and changed and went straight to someone else, which meant left Mia feeling it high and dry and wondering if she'd done something wrong. So I guess the advice I was thinking to disperse around that was more, you know, I had to put myself in Mia's shoes and then just couldn't sort of say, look, you know, kids at that age, they, they tend to change their minds. You know, it's, I don't take it too personally if, if you can. Um, she probably just wanted to, she might've had a, a friend that she known a little bit better in class, perhaps that she wanted to do a video for. Um, but again, it's, it's so hard because this mm. is all really new to me. And I'm not one who sits down and reads and maybe I should, um, you know, dad help books or, you know, those kind of resources to, to guide my way through this kind of stuff. I sort of just float through and, and try and think about what my mum and dad would have done. Um, but yeah, that's just one example. And obviously with Eloise and Sam, it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, I was going to say that one with me is that's a tricky one. Like you almost have to, I don't know, I always think you kind of have to relate it back to another situation where she may have done something similar um, or you being able to try to sit in her shoes or feel what she would feel in that situation. Uh, I always, like, our little fella does, he's not at that phase yet where you have sort of friends and friendship groups and things like that. But I don't know. I'd be, I've already, in my head, I'm going, oh, mate, it's not that time you said you wanted a peanut butter sandwich and I made you a peanut butter sandwich. And then five seconds later, you said, I actually wanted a banana sandwich. And I've gone, well, I've made you this peanut butter sandwich and now you want a banana sandwich. What am I going to do with a peanut butter sandwich, mate? So I don't know, I try to relate things back to uh, times where he may have shown that behavior previously. But yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how that works in the real world uh, or how will they take that. But I go, mate, banana sandwich, peanut butter sandwich. And this is, this is going to be a great example of, um, of problems at different ages. Um, because Eloise, like Mia's problems are all now sort of friendship and politicalness within friendship groups. Whereas Eloise, who's four in her, she's, she's doing kindergarten again. Um, and for the first time, she's actually said that someone has um, said to her that, no, you can't play with us. Um, oh. And when she relayed that story, yeah, she felt, and you can see what's sort of cutting up inside a little bit. Um, so again, I've had this, you know, put on the, oh, what should I say, hat. And um, yeah, around we go again. So, you know, how did that make you feel? And, you know, did, that, did it hurt you? Did, you? did you talk to anyone about it? Did you just go and find someone else to play with? Um, yeah. Yeah, well that, I guess all you can do is listen. And half the time it's just listening because it's just them talking about, I guess it's just them talking about it and then you listening. And you know, even if you can't solve the problem, and I guess we, we can never really solve those sort of problems and nor should we, but just, you know, relate it, relate it back to, um, I don't know, I, that's a tricky one. Uh, we've all been in that situation before. We were being you know, kicked out of friendship groups. You used to kick me out of the friendship group when we used to work together. Yeah, footy tipping friendship group. Like, staying out the field all alone. How does it feel now? Out. How does it feel now? <laughs> oh, you might have to off here. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. funny like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I still cry to my weeties each morning about that. No, uh, it's funny. Like I, I have these conversations when my, when my little fella does, I, I say bad stuff. Like he doesn't have anything like malicious, but sometimes he'll just throw a fit and I'll go, I don't want to play with you, mate. And he'll get all sad. He goes, Oh, why don't you want to play with me? I've gone, well, I don't want to play with you, with you because you were rude to me. I'm going back when daddy was a kid, he had friends. And then when he didn't, you know, he didn't play with certain he didn't play a certain way or um, something like that, then I didn't have any friends anymore. And I was really sad. So I don't know, it's completely different to the Mia situation where, uh, sorry, the Eloise situation where somebody's excluded her, but mate, you've been excluded before. I've been excluded before. You know, Homer Simpson's been excluded before from the no homers club. They're allowed one. Uh, it's almost just relaying like sort of real life examples. Even if she won't understand it, it might make her feel better that it happens to other people. 
Yeah, I think what you said there as well about not solving the problem for her, but just giving her the advice and sort of try and take on board, like an advice channeled through a kid as well, you know, something that they understand, I think is important. Um, what not to do was, I remember, I was probably last year or the year before, when I was, I was going around this the whole, the, the complete wrong way, there'd be conversations on the drive home where I'd start bursting into fits of laughter about the problems Mia was telling me, which is just making it worse <laughs> to the point where she'd be screaming whilst tears running down her face. Why are you laughing at me? Stop laughing. And I just had to say, oh no, I'm just thinking of a joke someone told me today. And I just kept in fits of laughter. Eventually I'd calm myself down and then get to the, you know, the cause of the problem. But yeah, if there's anyone out there, try not to laugh. Just pinch yourself oh, or do something. Don't don't, don't laugh. Especially the little girl. <laughs> oh, kids lose their mind when you laugh. When you when they're really serious about something and you laugh, they lose their yeah. mind. That, that little fella does that as well. Like he was, what was he doing the other other week? He brushed his hair to get ready for kinder. I think he brushed his hair. He's already he's and like he's kind of posing in the posing in the mirror. He goes, "I look so cool in the mirror," and my partner laughed. It's like daddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my partner laughed at him because it was it was hilarious. But she's laughed out yeah, that, yeah, and he lost his mind. Like he's like, oh, no. oh, he like stormed out of the room. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me? No, I I want you gone. Just because yeah, because it's just laughing at the at the wrong time. So yeah, that that's cracking advice to all the parents out there. If it's a problem <laughs> or if the kids are really serious about something, yeah, just don't laugh. Just don't laugh. Yeah, great advice. But it, I guess, so do, you, do you read any of these kind of these kind of books, like on what to do in these situations? Or are you sort of similar and just sort of face it as it comes, or do you do you chat to? Do you, do you have any mates with older kids that have been through this before, or? Because I, I don't really have any in my sort of circle of friends. No, nah, not do I. There's a, I'm sort of... there's a guy that I talked to who's got an older kid who's probably seven or eight. And I was speaking to him, him last week and he had a problem um, with his kid. Well, it wasn't a problem so much. His kid had dacked another kid in the change rooms at school. Natural reaction. Okay. I go, yeah, I was like, well, mate, that's, that sort of stuff happens. Like that's happened plenty of times when we were at school, someone had dacked somebody. I said, the important question, was it jocks and all? <laughs> Because no, but he no, properly. Yeah, no jocks, no matter. But the kid complained. The kid who got dack felt. I don't know what the right word is. Jim, you know, just violated. Violated, yeah, violated is a good word. He felt violated, so he complained, and the the, the kid got in trouble, and you know, parents got called. Blah blah blah. I was like, that's kind of a nothing sort of thing. So, I speak to him because he's got a slightly older, a slightly older boy, so I can kind of understand some of the things which will be coming. But on the whole, I kind of just go, okay. I just try to listen to listen and just kind of go, okay, if I was in the kid's shoes, what would I think? And what would make me feel better? I often get it wrong, I guess, but like, that's all, that's all I've got. I don't, I don't think you can learn these sort of things in a book as much as kind of just living them. And, you know, you've learned from laughing at me not to laugh. <laughs> Big lesson I've learned there. And I guess we should probably um, enjoy or appreciate the, the issues they're going through at the moment because in you know teenage years or high school years i can imagine they're going to be tenfold worse yeah well there's a there was a um there's a local local school down here which was burnt down um by a group of six 13 year old kids uh last weekend i think it was on the friday night oh, wow. yeah yeah so like they're only 13 there's six of them i've gone well i'm not that worried about the, the little problems now you're trying to avoid the little problems becoming big problems now so in you know 10 years time the kids aren't burning down schools apparently this was accidental although the kids had oh, snuck right, out yeah. and arranged to catch up at five o'clock and were on the roof and they set fire to the roof on a 30 degree night they lit a fire to keep warm so i think <laughs> there's a couple of little white lies or a few a few glitches in this plot <laughs> daylight savings lighting fires everyone can see you but yeah, but that's that's kids sneaking out to meet up with kids of the opposite gender at five a.m. In, in the morning on a Saturday morning. So you oh, five, know, five a.m. Sorry, yeah. I thought you said five p.m. No, five no, a.m. Five a.m. So yeah, so Jeez. So being excluded from a friendship group, or um, you know, not being able to video somebody's talk, you're absolutely right. It's kind of small fry in the grand scheme of things, but they're really important to they're really important to the kids now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess that's how we deal with it now, which will 
potentially shape them, I guess. Yeah, I, I just it's just good that you can get that information out of uh, out of your girls because a lot of the time you know, they just don't talk about that sort of stuff. So yeah, the fact that you can talk to them and they're they're happy enough to tell you about it, I think that's that's the most important thing. Yeah, yep. And I mean, it's I've nutted out how to get it out of Mia, and I. Assuming other ways are going to be that a little bit more difficult because she's a bit more of a closed book. So, and Sam, well, I don't know if he's got any problems at the moment. He's dummy, <laughs> I guess, or I've enough sleep. Or well, the other part is you, you don't have to you don't have to come up with a solution right on the spot. You can kind of take it back and work on it with Kim as well. Like mm. when me comes up with blah, or Eloise comes up with blah, that you can go, okay, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll have a think about that. And I'll th- I'll think, see if I can think up anything which might help. And you can always come back to her later on or the next day or something. That's um, true. Yes. Yeah. She might she's stew, very she, good with that kind of stuff. She might stew on it for a day, but like you're better to stew on it for a day than and maybe get the right answer than blurt something out and or, or laugh and make her cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just forward all problems to Kim from that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Suggestions on a postcard. <laughs> yeah. But it'll, it'll change as you get older because I think as kids get older, they're, they're less likely to share stuff. So if you can set the groundwork now of them sharing and you, know, you, you kind of helping in inverted commas, that'll be good for 10 or 15 years time when the issues are much bigger. Yeah, and I guess yeah, that's really important, trying to find that, that trust that from your child that it's okay to you know, any problem, whether it's trivial or it's a big issue, you know, big or small, they can just always come to you with that problem. So if you can set that, sort of scenario from the get-go, then, yeah, you are, yeah I dare say kids won't be burning down the schools at 5 a.m. when they're 13. Yeah, I, I hope not. I hope not. Mm. That's a, yeah, really interesting. And, and I think having two girls and a boy and the way those ages will intersect and interlap over the next sort of, uh, you know, I say 10 years, because what by then me is, what, 16, 17? Yeah, 17 should be 10, yeah. Wow. So yeah, what once yeah, yeah. So the, while they overlap, because I always have the theory that boys are maybe more difficult in the beginning, and then they might be kind of, I say, calm down. They can become a bit more self sufficient by the time they reach fourteen or fifteen, and then girls, when they get to thirteen to sort of eighteen, are maybe harder. So yeah, um, yeah. Well, we're having a lot of vacations in that time period. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Dad? Oh, he's, he's left. He's left again. <laughs> Oh man, well that's a, that's a great topic, Maddie. I don't, it's it's and it's going to be something which will evolve the way you know for both of us going forward. Like you know, where I'm only just kind of getting these sort of things now, where the little fella will you know have any sort of issues. Most of the issues that he has are actually with us. Um, we got a couple of blow ups today just over nothing. Like I'm just trying to help him. Oh mate, do you need a hand? Like complaining about something. Oh, do you need a hand with that? Just lost his mind a couple of times. I'm like. Yeah. You just go punch a pillow, buddy. Just don't, just don't lose your rag so much. Just go and you know, just sit in the corner or do something, or just go. I want to be alone. So we're getting to the stage where it's we're going through the stage where it's trying to go. Okay, there's something which you're not being able to communicate. And you're getting frustrated, and you're, ta- you're kind of taking it out on us. So just, just say, I need some alone time. I don't just, oh, I don't need anything at the moment. But be polite about it. Not, not yell. Not you know, push those sort of things. So. Yeah. yeah, it can be it can be so tricky to find that trigger, isn't it? As well, sometimes. Yeah, literally, the two today were nothing. Mm. They were just literally one was one was okay. He was doing some craft because I want to do some craft. Okay, what do you want me to get? And he was in there with his grandfather, and um, he's like, "No, you're gone." And like, we got really loud and pushy about. It. I said, "Mate, all you have to do is just say, oh, 'I'm okay.'" And the same thing happened with my my partner later on. Um, he was trying to communicate that he wanted to stick a tea towel on the top of this, you know, toilet paper roll thing and make a flag out of it. Um, but he's never done anything like that before. So she was like, I'm not really sure what you mean. Do you want me to do this? And he's like, no. And he's like, got really rolled up. So admittedly this afternoon he hadn't had any sleep, but um, yeah, just going through that weird phase of, you know, just, mate, you just see, all you have to say is like, I can do it myself or I don't need any help or just we're trying to help you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And, again, and that's good. Like it sounds like you, you took that, you were calm, you collected, you gave some great advice. Um, and, you know, I mean, he might not take it on straight away, but if repeat, 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 and he'll be, yeah, he'll be 
Yeah. I was, I was calm until he whacked my um, wife on the head. Like when she was just, uh, yeah. she was sitting there. He's, I just, I'm watching this because I was cooking dinner. He's gone whack on her head and grabbed a hair clip out of her hair. I've grabbed him. I've gone over and gone, don't, don't you ever hit you know, a girl or, or your mum? And picked him up, went to grab the thing out of his hand. And he really held onto it. So I kind of picked him up by the arm like supporting the other one and he's like kicking and stuff and then he ran off and he got like a this plastic claw thing and he came and hit me a few times with that gun mate you hit me as many times you want with that claw you, you just do it and then i had like kind of a red mark on my arm so then at dinner i was like oh mate i just kind of nodded to my wife and just gone oh my arm and she goes oh is that is that what fergus did your arm so then we kind of handed up about oh you've actually hurt daddy and then he got really sad about it and then he was like oh, i'm really sorry like i shouldn't have done that so just trying different things to communicate the same goddamn message is is hard <laughs> yeah it is yeah but i mean look that's another great example there he's understood that what he did was, was the wrong thing and he's caused some pain and he's sorry for it so Kudos to you, mate. Oh, today, tomorrow, will probably do the same thing again. <gasps> Groundhog Day. Sinks in eventually. Yeah, I think, I think it does. Well, that's a good place to uh, wrap up for this week. Remember to subscribe to Daddy's Last on iTunes if you haven't done already. And while you're there, please leave a review. Also, tell your mates about the podcast, especially for our guys. Most of all, thanks for listening. And we'll be back next week for another episode, or should I say serving, of Daddy Eats Last. How's that for a dad joke? Catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.